It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video than what we normally do. If you're looking to start your own at-home bakery, then this is the video for you. So let's get into it. I'm going to be giving you 10 tips on how to successfully start your own at-home bakery. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not going to be going over how you obtain a valid business license or what you need in terms of food safety in your area. You will need to look up all of those legalities on your own time or in a different video. There may be many reasons why you want to start your own at-home bakery, but the number one reason has to be that you have a passion for what you are doing. If you don't enjoy cooking, caking, decorating things, you're really, really not going to enjoy your job. If you're baking for business, that's just not even a thing. You're never gonna be successful and you're gonna be really, really unhappy. Keep in mind that you're not going to be gaining a lot of revenue, but having an at-home bakery is a great place to start so that you could have a stepping stone into maybe getting your own actual storefront. brand design, logos, you're probably going to hear all over the place that that is super important and your brand is what people look at first. But when you're running an at-home bakery, I can honestly tell you that that never mattered. <laughs> the pretty logo designs that I had, the stickers that I had made up, the business cards, they were all kind of just additional fun fluff, something for me to do. I could have honestly run my at-home bakery without doing any of that stuff. What people are looking at is they're looking at your work. You need to make sure that you have your social media on the up and up and you need to make sure that you post daily because a lot of people aren't going to know what your baked goods taste like in the beginning. In fact, if you're doing something where it is particularly cake design or cookie design, a lot of people don't really care what your baked goods taste like. They're really looking at what does it look like. Of course, the taste is a secondary factor, and of course you should always make sure that you're offering a quality product, but quite honestly, somebody that's going in and ordering an $1,000 cake from you that is six tiers is looking at what does this product look like. This also segues nicely into the fact that social media is important, but word of mouth is just as important. A lot of people that have thousands of Instagram followers may not necessarily have a lot of actual customer traffic coming in. My social media followings were small, small, small in the hundreds, and they remained in the hundreds all throughout my time of selling baked goods. But I had a steady stream of customers at all times because it just starts with one little group kind of being interested in your work and then it kind of spirals off. And that's just kind of the way business works in general. Pricing. This is a huge issue for everybody in the cookie and cake community. Here is my first thing that I want to say. Never ever give a discount. Even if they say, oh, I'm going to buy from you weekly, monthly, I'm going to purchase a hundred cookies every week. It doesn't matter. And the reason that I say that is because you are not a big conglomerate company. You cannot pump out cookies and cakes at the same rate that a commercial bakery can do that. Even commercial bakeries that are like a mom and pop shop, they can't do that either. So really giving a discount doesn't benefit you at all. And it's also going to draw in customers that are always looking for a discount. So you want to make sure that you just price according to what you think you are worth. And I know that's tricky because we are our worst critics. In future, I'll probably do a video solely dedicated to pricing because it is such a big thing to unpack and to develop. The last thing I want to leave you with is this regarding pricing. I worked at not only my at-home bakery, but I also worked at a commercial bakery. And I can tell you this, so many times we undervalued ourselves and in doing so, it causes you to psychologically rush your work because you're thinking, oh, that customer only paid X amount for this much work. I really need to hurry up or else it's not gonna be worth my while. So it's better to just charge those premium prices, but also come through with a premium and quality product. Now, people that order from at-home bakers kind of understand that they're ordering from an at-home baker. It's not a huge company that can offer a lot of refunds because 
you're just one person. So keep that in mind. That is good news for you because it means that you're going to attract customers that are a little bit more understanding, but you can run into customers that will be upset with you. And luckily for myself, this only happened one or two times over the whole span of me doing this. Now, when I was working in an actual commercial bakery, this was a regular occurrence. It just happens. No matter how great your work is, no matter what quality product you're outputting, it's just something that happens. And you know what? You just have to make sure that you've got a thick skin to deal with it. And quite frankly, I didn't have that thick of skin. So that's why eventually I stopped doing the whole at-home bakery thing. So the question is, how do you deal with these customers? And these are the pointers that I want to give you. You want to rectify the situation, but not to the point where you are going above and beyond more than you should. I worked in the customer service industry for a number of years, and I can tell you the more that you apologize, and say you're sorry, the worse it sometimes gets. It's good to be genuine and direct. Sometimes it genuinely isn't your fault. And usually it's a miscommunication. The problem usually goes something like this. The customer comes to you and says, I would love to order some princess themed cookies. And when you haven't been doing this for a long time, you think, okay, princess cookies, great. And maybe you might ask the question, what color would you like those princess cookies? And they say something like pink. And then you say, any other details you would like to add? And the customer says, no, I trust you. Make it pink and princess. That seems like an innocent enough conversation. However, I have been there way too many times in this industry where their pink is not your pink and their princess isn't your princess. So it's really, really important that you narrow down those details, ask for pictures, ask for specifics. Even when a customer is a repeat customer and say they trust you, that doesn't always necessarily pan out, unfortunately. You have to know that customer really well to understand, yeah, they're super chill and they don't care what I do and they're gonna let my creativity flow. But in this industry, I have learned that you really, really need to ask for specifics. And if you don't ask for specifics, one thing that I did was I would say, okay, great, please sign at the bottom, either digitally or actually in person, that you are all right with me taking my own creative freedoms. That way it kind of saves you later on. So if they come back at you and say, hey, this isn't what I ordered and this isn't what I envisioned, then you can kind of show them that piece of paper or that document and say, well, no, you said that I could take my creative freedoms. And I really honestly hope that you never have to deal with that, but that's just one way to really cut down on unhappy customers. I really had to up my communication skills. Staying organized is really tricky for some people. And once those orders start flowing in, it's even harder to stay organized. So you need to develop a system that's going to work for you. For myself, I found it really tricky to keep up with online orders that were coming in all over the place. So you wanna make sure that your online ordering system is happening all in one spot, whether that be Facebook, Instagram, an actual particular website or email address is also a great way to effectively communicate with your customers, but you need to make sure that it's only one of those things because it's going to be really hard to keep track of if you have it all over the place. Another part of staying organized that's really important is the space itself. You need to make sure that you've got all your colorings in one area, that you've got your ingredients in another area. It's really going to save you a lot of time. And it's really important that you have it organized in such a way that's going to work for you. And unfortunately, there is no one right answer for this. You kind of have to just play around, trial and error, see what spaces work best for you. is a huge one, especially for my husband and kids. You really have to make sure that you consult whoever you're living with, or if you live alone, then you've already got this all checked off. But an at-home bakery really does overtake your space. And most people I know don't live in houses that can accommodate a full-on bakery inside. I'm very lucky I have two kitchens, but when I was really doing this full on, I lived in a tiny, tiny space. And when I was doing cookies or cakes, it really overtook the whole kitchen. 
and we couldn't actually have a home cooked meal when I was doing these large orders. So it's really important that you consult whoever you're with and that you make sure that you have a really good support system. My husband has always been 1000% supportive of everything that I do, even when it infiltrates his space, even when I'm the one asking him to fix my airbrush machines, to make me crazy cake structures. You really just have to find what works for you and your family. If your family needs a lot of space and they can't really deal with having things all over the place, then maybe this isn't the time to start your at-home bakery. Always fulfilling your orders is a really super important thing. Over all the years that I did this, I never missed an order. And I have a little story for you. I was working on a cake. My water broke at 37 weeks and I didn't expect for myself to go into labor. But that person had a birthday party the next day for their child. And if I didn't follow through, then their child would just go cakeless because I didn't organize things properly enough. Now, of course, going into labor is something completely out of my control, but you need to make sure that you have buffers in place in case something like that happens. So I make sure to have a lot of cookie and cake friends. And that brings me to my next point. There is no such thing as competition. And what I mean by that is, of course, there's lots of bakeries and at-home bakeries all over the place. Where I live, it's a hugely saturated market. I think that having a lot of different bakers and cookiers around is what creates community and what allows you to ask questions, to vent about the things that might be going on in your baking life and your baking career. And you don't need to be afraid of other people selling similar products as you or maybe even taking ideas from you. I actually think that there's no such thing as stealing an idea. There is such thing as stealing people's work, which I think is very wrong and that is plagiarism. You need to make sure that you're separating inspiration and ideas from actually legitimately stealing somebody's work. And in the cookie and cake community, I mean, all over the place, there's things that trend like unicorn cakes, for example, jar cakes, paint your own cookie kits, make your own cupcake kits at home. All of these things are trending ideas and it's really hard to say who came up with it the very, very, very first time. When I see that somebody has used an idea of mine, I think that is absolutely phenomenal. I love that people think that my idea is so great that they want to go and do it too. And nobody is going to be able to recreate your work exactly. And this is why I don't think there is such thing as competition. Just because somebody else is selling a product that's similar to you doesn't mean that a customer is always going to go to that person over you or vice versa. It just means that they're still going to gravitate towards the baker whose work they like the best. And we all do it so differently. I still recommend bakers all over the place. And I often recommend a lot of different people on YouTube as well, because in my opinion, there is so much cake to go around for everybody to have a slice. And it's just so much better when you're a positive light in the baking community. Don't take on more than you can handle. This took me years and years to get to a place where I actually took on what I wanted to be doing and as much as I could handle without having those late nights. And when you are rushed for time, it makes your work not as good. So start off nice and slow. Only accept one or two orders a week and see how well you do with that. Make time to hone in your craft. Above all else, why are you doing this whole bakery thing? It's because you like to create sweet treats. If you don't continue to better yourself and learn new techniques, then you're gonna stay really stagnant. 
It's so important that you don't let yourself burn out to the point where you don't want to do this anymore. What's great about having an at-home bakery is it's flexible hours. It's flexible everything. If you stuck it out this long into my video, congratulations and thank you very much for watching all the way through. I really, really hope that these tips help you. I wish somebody told me when I first started all of this, some of this advice. It could have saved me a lot of headache and I hope that you continue to do what you love to do. And if you do decide to open an at-home bakery, I wish you all the success in the world. And honestly, gaining a customer base is really not that difficult. As soon as you start posting on social media, you're going to get people that are going to look at your stuff and are going to start messaging you. It really happens quite organically. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Bye!